Citerio. Good afternoon and uh, thank you very much for this invitation. It's a real honor for me uh, to attend this webinar. Unfortunately, Professor Mazzaferro uh, cannot join us because of institutional commitments. So I'll try to do my best to present you on this topic. This difficult title gives uh, uh, for granted that surgery has limitations and is not sufficient to cure liver cancer. And this is certainly true. But I would also say that surgery remains in, most, uh, in many instances the sole option to allow zeroing of HCC. This is in fact uh, uh, the main argument in favor of a modern definition of surgery as the best treatment option able to complete the work of uh, other non-surgical therapies. Uh, actually, the, the entire field of surgery has under, is uh, undergoing a thorough transformation and rethinking. With respect to the past, uh, characterized by skills of uh, variable precision, uh, very much uh, operator dependent. Today, we are observing a fantastic cooperation between humans and technology which elevate the level of precision and efficiencies of surgery to a level never seen before. Uh, we can see artificial intelligence, uh, surgical robotics, uh, 3D reconstruction and printing that are already used on a wide scale of procedures. Technology-driven surgery has allowed a great reduction in invasiveness through an increase in complexity and costs. And uh, interestingly, despite this uh, increasing in uh, complexity, surgical interventions has uh, somehow lost their central role in cancer management and transformed into a distributed and ancillary component of cancer cure. If you look at the literature, particularly some uh, uh, open access literature, web uh, streamed information, there is a tremendous amount of research conduct on users' devices, techniques, and uh, while a, there is a, a progressive reduction on the original contributions of the surgeons to academic research on disease curability and uh, important endpoints. In the particular area of HCC, the characteristic of surgery that we can uh, take as the, the most invasive local regional treatment uh, are clearly different and somehow opposed to those present in the systemic treatment options. These uh, characteristics may be considered limitations as they are in the context of primacy of phase three trials, but in many ways can be embraced as opportunities for a more productive integration uh, with other therapeutic approach. Uh, clearly the driving force uh, of surgery in cirrhosis is focused on individual components of the patient rather than on conclusions of evidence-based investigations. Surgery is focused on mechanistic observations of conditions that may be modified or fixed while is less interested in the mechanism that cause the absurd condition. In a way, uh, surgery is more prone to confuse for science what is only a product of technology. And surgery has a fast reaction to any request of transformation in order to ease a procedure or uh, improve a perceived outcome. However, uh, this transformation largely relies on single center observations, and that causes scatter transformation, which dilute the positive effect of possible improvements. I will try to explain this concept uh, with some examples, starting, start, starting with the point of individual components as the driving forces of surgery in HCC. Here you have the main current uh, indication to liver resection across major guidelines. All these guidelines agree that eligibility to liver resection must consider not only tumor burden, but also other parameters such as liver function, 
volume of the future liver remnant, portal hypertension, and presence of comorbidities. And um, all these parameters should be within limits that are described somehow unprecisely because in need of individual interpretation. And we can see uh, this in, in different uh, examples. Here you have an example that on the patients with uh, cirrhosis, HCC and portal hypertension. These patients can undergo liver resection with acceptable mortality and liver decompensation rates. In this study, for example, the open approach was a predictor of decompensation and the laparoscopic approach was the sole predictor of a textbook outcome. And with uh, this patient selection, overall survival can reach 55% at five years. Also child B patients can be treated with resection if sufficient selection is provided on the basis of a lot of uh, parameters uh, that consider tumor burden, liver functional test, and alpha fetoprotein. And outcomes with, the, with these selections can be as good as 50% at five years. Also, multiple HCC can be resected. Uh, this Japanese survey collected more than 2,000 patients child A with up to three nodules. And these studies showed better outcomes of surgery with respect to chemoembolization within this subject population. Portal vein thrombosis as well might not be considered an absolute contraindication to surgery. Several studies demonstrated the beneficial effect. And in this particular study from Mainz in Germany, patient with HCC related portal vein thrombosis, if eligible to resection, showed a significant advantage in survival with respect to any other non-surgical therapies. And this uh, effect, this beneficial effect was more pronounced for patients with, with VP1 and VP2, that means a segmental portal vein thrombosis. Clearly uh, in HCC, as uh, in many other cancers, the surgical extension is not the sole determinant of prognosis. In this meta-analysis on randomized controlled trial and the propensity match studies, anatomic resection with the removal of the entire segment containing the tumor with respect to non-anatomic resection, that means a wide excision of the tumor site, uh, showed to be beneficial in achieving tumor control, but did not impact on overall patient survival. In fact, aggressiveness, uh, aggressive features of the tumor, such as uh, microvascular invasion and tumor grading drive a prognosis independently on the extent of resection. With respect to technology, uh, liver surgery for HCC is fluted every day by new devices and application that uh, if are not science, at least are amazing. I, I have here some examples. Uh, now we can through 3D reconstructions of CT scan or MRI images, surgeons can stereoscop stereoscopically uh, and comprehensively observe the tumor locations, shape and size and uh, um, relationship with the surrounding vessels to a better preoperative planning. Radiomics is another example that can uh, connotate liver CT or MRI images in a way that give unprecedented non-invasive information on histopathologic diagnosis, hepatic venous pressure gradient, and other characteristics that uh, once again improve decision-making. Fluorescence guided surgery is another evolving field in HCC. These images show um, a case of a positive ICG HCC. The fluorescent camera that you can see on a black and white mode in B and with green overlay image in C um, can reveal the presence of an HCC lesion directly under the surface of the liver 
which is impossible to recognize by naked eye. And in this other example, show a negative ICG staining of the hepatic segments to guide anatomic resections. You can inject intravenously ICG while clamping the glissonium pedicle tributary to, to the tumor. And this produces a staining of the segment to be preserved next to the one containing the tumor. And the boundaries between the two segments is, is uh, visible very clearly. And uh, in this way, the resections can be, the resection can be more precise. A major step forward in surgical treatment of HCC is of course the minimal invasiveness. Compared to the open procedures, the laparoscopic and robotic approach allow more accurate dissection and isolation of pedicles due to the magnified view and uh, may also reduce the risk of liver decompensation postoperatively. And um, robotics, moreover, with the artic articulated instruments, uh, articulated instruments are of further help in improving uh, the dexterity of the surgeon. There are uh, many studies demonstrating better outcomes with minimal invasive liver surgery. Here you have one of the more uh, recent showing in addition to known short-term advantages of minimal invasive liver resection, such as shorter postoperative stay, lower morbidity, and less liver decompensation, also a possible advantage in terms of overall survival and recurrence-free survival with respect to comparable patients undergoing traditionally, uh, traditional open resection for HCC. A clear example of the transformation attitude of liver surgery for HCC is liver transplantation and the roller coaster run along the years with respect to eligibility to transplant, both in terms of selection criteria and priority assignments. After a long study, very difficult to conduct, we recently got the final demonstration of the effectiveness of liver transplantation in those patients with tumor beyond line criteria who were downstaged. This prospective randomized trial was designed a few years ago on, uh, in nine Italian liver centers and focused on patients with HCC beyond line, child A or uh, B7, and having a prediction of survival of at least 50% according to Metro Ticket Calculator. The median follow-up uh, of the patient in these studies was uh, more than five years. After a successful and sustained downstaging, patients were randomized to liver transplantation or best non-transplant options. And uh, in terms of overall survival, and tumor event-free survival, the results were very clear and favor liver transplantation. Maybe the most important result of this trial is the reversed approach to the expansion of Milan criteria. That is, rather than discussing on alternative criteria, let's consider all the comers and decide on the base of response to downstaging. And maybe because uh, the randomized design of this study, the trial was convincing enough to conclude the debate in place from a decade. And that resulted also in the new BCLC opening to transplantation for the area of intermediate HCC. In the area of liver transplantation for HCC, Recent findings demonstrate also that better organ pressure preservation system with machine perfusion may contribute to reduce the tumor recurrence risk through inhibitions of uh, inflammatory reactions associated to ischemia reperfusion injury, particularly when marginal donors are, are used as happens very commonly with HCC patients that uh, usually have low meds and may uh, receive a marginal or a DCD donor or a, yes, a DCD donors. In this study from the University of Zurich, 
these delivers treated with open seam perfusion had less intrahepatic tumor recurrence than those found in recipient of conventional DBD donors. More studies are needed to confirm this observation, but the working hypothesis is that machine liver perfusion may impact on the early immune response of the recipient and reduce metastatic cell engraftment in the transplanted liver and therefore reduce recurrence. In the field of liver transplantation, the main driver of the current use of transplantation is medical acuity. Patient listed for liver transplantation can present with a wide range of medical acuity. Here you have a graphic representation of three different types of liver failure as a function of time. Acute, that is the, the red line, acute and chronic liver failure, the blue line, and chronic liver failure on the uh, yellow line. All the three framed into a window of transplantability within certain MEL score intervals that are, uh, that is, this window is associated with different time intervals within which transplant has to be done to avoid futility on one side and failure on the other side. And the amplitude of such time interval defines the medical acuity. And it's time to introduce the concept of cancer acuity. The window of transplantability in cancer patient is not defined by, by mild intervals, but is determined by the adherence of, on the, to the upper and lower limits that frame the positive, the predicted positive outcome of liver transplantation. Notably, the position of an HCC patient within the window of transplantability may vary and can be determined, determined by any other anti-cancer treatment able to control progression and induce tumor response. In this patient, uh, in the black curve, an initial cancer high acuity has been limited by treatments inducing tumor response within, with consequent return in the low acuity area. Over time, the tumor tendency to growth produces another tumor progression and the second condition of cancer acuity. And that calls for a priority mechanism able to offer the transplant option before the tumor enters the too advanced for liver transplantation area. So uh, rather than expanding the indication to surgery for HCC as an independent treatment option, what should be explored is the role of surgical interventions as a treatment to be applied when the sequence on, of other available option has reached enough tumor control. The future of surgery may be on new adjuvant approach and tumor responses ahead of the technical removal of the tumor. Uh, because actually surgery, more than any other components of clinical management of HCC, has incorporated the concept of personalized approach, the assumption that uh, no predetermined uh, treatment fits all, and that the permanent attention to the individual components of each single patient should be part of daily practice and also of clinical research. And to conclude, I would like to remind that major guidelines on clinical management of HCC include the transplant option as a true game changer of prognosis. So not only the transplant community should insist for equal access to liver transplantation for both cancer and non-cancer patients, and the concept of cancer acuity should be promoted also by oncologists and hepatologists caring for HCC patients. And I thank you very much for your attention.